Tonight's topic is whole home audio experiences. I'm Risa Schultz and I'm joined by Allison Lopez and we're from WeConnect and we're gonna be moderating tonight's conversation. And we are excited to be joined by a panel of industry experts. So I'm gonna ask each of you to introduce yourself. If you could give us your name and tell us what you and your company do. John, why don't you go first? Uh, my name is John Centers. I'm the president of Genesis Audio. We're a uh, home theater, home automation and distributed audio video company located in uh, Gahanna, Ohio. Hayden, why don't you go next? Yes, I'm uh, Hayden Piles, and I work for a company called Bob Webb Homes. We are a local custom home builder, and I am a new home sales consultant. So I really kind of take the client from point A to all the way through the finish, and even after the client has moved in and uh, fully customized their home. And there's obviously a lot of variables involved in that, and we're going to dive into that. And Danny? I'm Danny Rousseau. Uh, my company is Daniel Russo Home. I'm an interior designer based out of Columbus, Ohio. I travel the country to many different places for projects and I have a lot going on this year. <laughs> Great, and Joey. My name is Joey Perfido. I work for Paradigm Speakers and Anthem Electronics all under one company. We are a Canadian manufacturer that builds some, some really great sounding speakers and electronics for home, home audio. Well, we are so excited to have you guys here tonight. Um, if you're watching live, please feel free to make comments or leave questions in the chat box and we'll try to get to those at the end. So let's get started. John, you've been in this business for over 20 years and obviously the industry has changed. Tell us why you wanted to start this Tech and Design Facebook Live series. Well, one of the biggest reasons was there's so much misinformation out there, you know, about how oh, you can do it wireless. You don't have to worry about pre-wiring the home anymore. You know, the, everything's, you know, can be Wi-Fi. And while that's true, it's not, it's not the best experience. You know, there's, there's things that need to be done. There's topics that need to be discussed. And, and I felt that, you know, I didn't want to have people continuing to build homes the wrong way. Luckily, we partnered with Bob Webb, you know, many, many years back. And with the homes that we do with them, we don't have that issue, but you know, several times they'll go into a project and there's just not enough wire to, to meet the customer's needs. So, you know, I, th I thought let's, let's try to get something together that we can help educate people, talk to them, at least get the dialogue going. I think education is so important and really showing people how technology can impact their life and impact their home experience and bringing entertainment and technology. So we're very excited to be part of this series. Um, John, tell us what is whole home audio and how does it integrate with smart home automation? Well, whole home audio is, is getting music and, and entertainment in the spaces that, that you need them. Um, there's no, I don't know, um, there's no roadmap for it. You know, it's what, what are your needs? Uh, so that audio could be the television audio in the kitchen so that you can hear it from the great room. It could be music outside. Uh, it could be music in the dining room so that it softly plays while you're having a, a family dinner. Music it's, in the shower. It's, it's, it's all of that. It's, it's your castle, your rules. You know, what do you want? And let me try to help put that together. And how does that work um, or tie in with smart home automation? Well, the, the smart home automation is, is really the key. It's the glue that binds it all together. I mean, we all have a, a phone full of a bunch of different apps. You know, there's an app to unlock our door. There's an app to arm our alarm. There's an app to turn on the lights. There's an app to control your thermostat. Well, every day we, we touch each one of those devices and, you know, do we want to go through 10 apps or do we want to open up one and just make it all happen? Or you, you hit a, a light switch that starts your day. You know, when you arm the alarm, you know, it turns everything off. You know, it doesn't need to be walking around the house. I mean, there's enough going on in our lives that if we can trim a little bit of that out, you know, there's a little bit more time to enjoy those, those private moments. Yeah, so I, I see whole home audio as being part 
of home automation. It's, it's, it's when audio works with the other things that home automation represents, right? Mm -hmm. walking, exactly. into, walking into your family room and hitting a button and having the audio go down, you know, the overall whole home audio go down and the speakers come up for the movies and the lights dim and the shades go down. And so you have this whole experience. So whole home audio is part of smart home automation, right? It's, it's the sure. entertainment of the, of the uh, experience. Yes, yes. yes. A seamless Very experience good. is what everybody seems to be looking for lately. Mm -hmm. Very yep. hard to find. Yes. Is Don't think it's hard to find on this team. <laughs> <laughs> That's sure. not. No, we've all, we, I think we've all accomplished it, you know, more than once. Yes. Yes. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen and we're going to show some examples of whole home audio elements in the home to give everybody an idea of actually what it looks like and feels like in their home. Yeah. And I think also to give people a reference of what we're talking about, perhaps when we refer to some things like in home, in, in wall speakers or in ceiling speakers and such. Yeah, so in, in this particular picture, um, in the upper left-hand corner, uh, you can see an example of the, the uh, Paradigm Garden Oasis speakers. And if they're hard to see, that's intentional. You know, the music doesn't necessarily need to dominate the space. It just needs to fill it. And so with that particular picture there, there's, there's a, a couple of properly placed speakers hidden behind some foliage and a subwoofer that's that buried a, 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 in the backdrop. You don't see it, but you experience it and feel it. And, and it does what you need it to do. Um, coming down one picture from there. That outdoor speaker looks artful too. Oh, so the, the, yeah. Um, so coming down one, one spot um, where you see the, the gray, blue and, and white wires, that's uh that's an example of the wiring that we do um, inside of a home. Now there's there's a lot of stuff that we we end up pulling into a house when we're doing the wiring and and we're pretty proud of it. So we try to make ours stand out and and be be properly placed and and accentuated. Um, I tell you a great picture of those the one right below that. That is a really large room. Um, and you can see the, the 75 inch television on the wall. But what you don't really see is a lot of speakers. Uh, they're in the ceiling. Um, so the, the idea behind it is it's a real minimalist view and, but it, you don't lack any performance. Uh, the paradigm speakers that we put in that ceiling do just a stunning job of being able to, you know, carry the, carry the sound the way that uh, the customer, you know, needs it to be. So you get that full immersive sound. Um, uh, down below that is a, that's a picture of a theater that we, uh, completed. And what we did there is you know, we, we placed, uh, some in-room speakers actually behind, uh, the fabric panels in the front of the room, um, put some, uh, speakers on the sidewall. Everything else is kind of concealed. Um, uh, believe me, it doesn't lack performance at all, <laughs> but aesthetically it's, it's very pleasing. Um, the, the speaker right there in the center, you know, it, that one, that picture is, a, is probably a, a great example of, of how an in-room speaker could be very well appointed. Um, uh, Paradigm does a great job. That's one of their uh, persona subs um, and, or the- It's a signature sub two. Signature sub two. Mm -hmm. um, so that, you know, it's a wood veneer um, and it, it kind of blends into the environment. It doesn't look like, you know, a big monstrous uh, speaker. It's a little zoomed in, so it's, it's kind of dominating, but as the, when, you, when you zoom out on the picture, it's, it's not quite as bad. It uh, almost looks like a coffee table, like a little It looks table. like an art, art deco piece yes. of furniture in the mid-century. Mid mid definitely one of the big, Definitely one of the biggest subwoofers we, we sell. Yep. Yeah. And, and Joey, you can actually um, with this with this particular 
you can pick the the veneer you can pick the colors right i mean you have and, the, and the, on the persona line since so signature sub is a, is a is a different series but on the persona sub and the persona speakers which are flagship in room floor standing which is up on the top right uh, we have five standard finishes and then we have 18 custom color finishes which most of them match uh, automotive finishes. So if you have a, a red Ferrari, uh, we have a color that matches red Ferrari or uh, awesome. yellow Lamborghinis and things like that. So you can get really, really fun with, with the Persona speakers. Um, I mean, it doesn't take away from how amazing they sound. They're some of the best speakers you'll ever hear. Uh, but just the look, the, the feel, uh, the design of the speakers were actually designed by uh, an, uh, an interior designer from our company. Um, to create that that curved cabinet, and it kind of kind of uh, blends itself into the room the way that it's it's designed. So it's a it's a beautiful looking speaker. The work of art. It is. Yeah. Okay. yeah the example right below that is um, is the in wall speakers, and you know, that's the uh, one of the larger uh, LCRs there. And you can actually it's it's tough to see, but there's actually one beneath the television as well. Um, but the grill's been painted to match the wall, so it kind of doesn't stand out and jump and say, hey, I'm a speaker, but performance-wise, you don't lack anything. Uh, but the, the integration of it all kind of just blends with, with the space. And then right there below, kind of in the middle, um, that's an example of Paradigm's uh, decor speaker. And what's great about that is every one of them are custom built for your television. You know, it, it doesn't matter what what brand, what model. It's custom built to to fit that television, so it looks like an extension of it. Um, and a lot of those, you know, spaces above the fireplace, you know, that's that's the best solution. Um, you, you don't sacrifice sound quality with it, so you maintain that performance, um, and it just does a great job. It looks, it all looks beautiful. I mean, that's that's the whole point here you know, is to have people understand that technology doesn't have to mean ugly or it doesn't have to be offensive. It could be very well hidden. It could be very seamless, um, you know, and that's the beauty of using the right integrator with the right product and just, um, just knowledge when you're building your home um, or, or decorating, decorating your home. I mean, you know, Danny, you could probably speak to this more than anyone of us really. I've, when it comes to I've been on the, I've been on the client side with John and this was boy, almost 20 years ago. And I experienced going through the selection process of the speaker, going through the pre-wiring process, watching it all unfold. And then also I did this in 2004 or five, so I also watched technology completely change and shift in 2008 to um, the Apple and the iPhone products. And we had this disconnection of um, gadgets. Uh, now it's like the microwave has Wi-Fi, the dishwasher, the refrigerator, um, everything is connected. And we have all these apps and sometimes I'm just like, I don't even want to turn the TV on because I have to open this app to change the channel and open that app for that. And it's good to have the all-in-one app, which I think John um, does well with uh, the Control 4 system. And there's a couple other ones out there. Mm -hmm. But wiring, pre-wiring is very important of how you use the room. And in the design process for me, when I meet with my clients, one of the first things I ask is, how are you going to use this room? Is there going to be a TV in this room, what are the goals of engineering the room to awesome. get the proper aesthetic? And yeah. hide the wires, hide the wires. <laughs> yeah, if, I mean, you know, I think most women honestly don't like to see the wires. It, it, it really bothers, it bothers us. Um, I'm a big wire hider myself. Um, and speaking of wires, I mean, you know, Hayden, you, you know, Bob Webb Homes is one of the premier custom home builders in your area. Um, can you talk to us a little bit about some of the solutions that you and John have cooked up 
regarding um, pre-wiring and, and, you know, how are you handling that as, as a builder? Yeah, so one of the big benefits of, of starting from scratch is tailoring it to exactly what you need. I think a lot of people are going into their existing homes, a resale market, whatever it may be, and, and it's not perfect for them. It, it may have been perfect for the past person, but not for them. And so that's where it's really fun just to take, take all the variables uh, of home building. It can be very, very overwhelming, but that's where we try to make it as easy as possible. And it's not just, hey, fill out this quick questionnaire and we'll build your house. It's let's get to know you. Let's get to know what your lifestyle is. Let's get to know, you know, do you drop off the kids daily? What time? What do you do at night? Do you entertain? Do you not entertain? Do you like to just go away? Do you like to, you know, hang out with everybody? And so that's where there's, there's no two houses that are alike. And, and just with that being said, you have to design the house around people's entertaining. You have to design it around, you know, if, if they are just going to be away and maybe be working. With COVID happening, obviously, our lifestyle has changed dramatically. And that's where it's really cool just to see the differences that I've seen over the last you know, six months and what people are requesting. And so when, when we design a house, um, I really like to start from the kitchen, the great room, those areas, and then build out because that's where you're hanging out. That's where you're going to be spending 80% of your waking hours. So why not have that be the cool spot, the one that's, that's for you. And so you, you take that philosophy and you kind of, it's starting to bleed out more. We're doing more indoors and outdoor spaces. And, and what I mean by that is we have entire walls that can be collapsed and they can come in or they can be open entirely. And so on a nice day, it's, it's really cool just to have the indoor outdoor element. And, and with that being said, you have to have speakers, you have to have the audio that's set up acoustically to match when the doors are closed or open, but it also has to be concealed. I mean, you, you don't want it to stick out, be ugly. Um, it's, all, it's, it's cool where we have um, in one of our houses, John was, he's like, hey, let's, let's try something new. And we're big on that. We are big on being innovative. We want to try the, the latest idea, the latest floor plan, you know, and they're not all winners, I'll be honest, but we learn from it. And that's where John um, put the speaker in one of our master bedrooms in the ceiling. And I think we've all seen a lot of ceiling speakers and, and they do conceal it very, very well. But I remember we opened the, the model home and people were coming out and they're like, Hayden, where are, where's the music coming from? I don't know where it is. And um, to the point where I, I had, I pulled people. I said, where do you think the music's coming from? And no one got it right. They all thought it would be in the beams. They all thought it was hidden behind a plant. They all thought it was in the ceiling behind the drywall made to penetrate the drywall and, and you couldn't tell. And so it's not only is that a cool element, but it's, it's also just, it's very seamless. And um, I don't know about you, but I'm a big, big fan of audio of music. I think that really sets the tone for the night for, for, I mean, and it can change too. Think about your favorite restaurant. We're, we're, we used to go out a lot, um, probably not as much now, but that's where our, our entertainment is in our own home. It may be a friend's home, whatever it may be. Yep. And you've got to set the tone from the or second the, you walk in. Or the backyard, right? Or the backyard. Exactly, where we, exactly. Where we, so, could have, where we could be together uh, with social distancing, right? in the backyard. Mm -hmm. um, you know, one, one of the things that when we talk to integrators that we hear a lot is that clients, customers are always saying, you know, um, they can never get enough audio wire. Like, I mean, it seems like they want audio in every room these days. So, you know, the whole concept of whole home audio is, has gone to the next level at this point, as you, you know, you said indoors, outdoors, um, you know, we're hearing people want it in the garage. They want it in their bathrooms. They want it at their front doors. I mean, are your homes, um, are you pre-wiring for that, even though the client might not want it today, but maybe in a few years, they might want to trigger some of that. I mean, how are you handling that? Well, like with us, are you talking to me or to Hayden? Well, uh, anybody, I was talking to Hayden, but you can take that, yeah. Yeah, so what, I mean, what we do is, is 
we know those spaces that that need to be there and we work with with the team at bob webb to make sure that we can get conduit paths in for those areas that maybe we're not going to be able to do today uh so that we can get to them tomorrow and a lot of times when we can't get to them and you know we know that it's going to be something they want we'll we'll go ahead and get the wire in there ahead of time um i know that Aiden, you could probably speak more oh sorry oh, not a problem. Aiden, you could probably speak more to pre-wiring for something like a electric um a motorized blind or shutter that's a low voltage item people kind of hear that and they automatically think it's expensive but the builder can pre-wire for that and not it's not going to be a huge expense and you're able to install something like that later down the road and john has the power um where he needs it for say alarms window treatments anything that can be foreseen hayden how do you handle yeah, so we that, that's definitely part of the discussion. Uh, as, as I said before, there's lots of variables in the home. And, and one of the big things that I like to get across and that Pablo likes to get across is the technology and the home automation and specifically home audio. So we, we always have a discussion of, you know, what are you in an ideal world? How would you like your house to be set up? You know, ideal world, meaning your bucket list, your wish list, and then, and then people tell me. And then I really kind of talk about the logistics and, and nine times out of 10, it's a lot easier than what people think. Exactly. Like you said, Danny, the, the pre-wiring for the, the blinds. I mean, I think what we're seeing nowadays, we're seeing bigger rooms, we're seeing taller ceilings, we're seeing lots of windows. People like to have all that light coming in, especially here in central Ohio, we need all the light we can get. <laughs> <laughs> so um, that's where people have windows in really high places that you just can't reach. And the ability to have that Please blind. Stop building can, those windows. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the weird windows. No, now we just need a way to clean those windows very easily. <laughs> no, and, tell me about it. Those windows. <laughs> and, Flor hey, in no. Florida, it, we're, we, we have, you know, huge windows like in almost every home. But, um, you know, you were talking uh, earlier, Hayden, about the indoor-outdoor uh, living space and about the great rooms, about the, the family room being in this, it's, it's really in the kitchen now. It's, you know, more of an open concept. Um, Joey, talk to us about audio correction, because I know this is something that's very important in, in, in quality home audio. Sure. And, and. To go back to what Hayden was saying, a lot of homes now have higher ceilings, bigger windows. We have these open floor concepts now with a lot of hard surfaces. And we even have speakers that are in bathrooms. So you've got a lot of hard surfaces in bathrooms as well. And what, what happens is, is when we're inside, we've got all these barriers around us and these hard surfaces where our voices bounce off and we don't sound like we normally would if we were outside where, our, where there are no barriers. So one of the things that we have uh, in a lot of our electronics is called anthem room correction. And basically what room, anthem room correction is doing is, is tr basically removing those barriers um, in that room and taking, taking the room into consideration um, so you have uh, better sounding vocals. Uh, you don't have that harsh sound when you've got uh, music uh, bouncing off the windows and on these on these uh, uh, hard surfaces, and that's not just for uh, distributed audio uh, speakers in the ceiling or in the wall. It's for surround systems. It's for subwoofers, and so that that technology is built into our Anthem products and some of and a lot of our Paradigm subwoofers. Um, so basically, a microphone comes with the electronics. Uh, custom integrators like, uh, like John and, at Genesis will run the room correction for each room. And now those speakers are going to sound as good as the way that they were, they were designed to sound. And it's, it, that is a, it's such an important part of, of the entertainment and the experience. Uh, so when you, when you, yes. Yeah, so when you, when you say uh, this, it comes with a speaker, is it, it's an external speaker because I mean, you and I had talked before and I was sure. even clear that there was software involved it's, in this. Yeah. So it's so uh, uh, most, most, <laughs> most of our, most of our products are Anthem products and subwoofers come with a microphone. 
The software is downloaded onto a laptop and the microphone is plugged into the laptop. It sees the Anthem product and it does a room correction uh, and basically uh, makes a, a sound, a sweep test out of the speakers and it tells the electronics how to adjust for that room. Um, and then once you're done, then you put the microphone back in the box and now your system sounds better. You don't have to touch it ever again, pretty much unless you move this move the house around or the, the room. Yeah, like if you, you know, Danny, like if you go in and you remove a rug or you move the furniture around, right? <laughs> yeah. That it really does affect the sound. Um, yeah. Yes, uh, I mean, textile, it's, amazing, it's amazing textile. to me that we even have this technology. I think a lot of people don't even know it's available. No. I think John had something to say to build on. Yeah, I, I, I've just spent the in, probably the better half of this afternoon doing exactly that. And oh, wow. we installed, it, it, we're, I'm in a house in Florida and we've, we've all seen that type of house where it's, it's tile floors and it's real tall ceilings and it's a wall of windows. And so we've got, you know, we've got speakers in the ceiling and you know, the, the, all the furnishings aren't quite in yet. So there's a lot of echo going on. And what we were able to do was come in. I was able to take my laptop, connect a microphone to it, read the room through the, the, the Anthem uh, uh, MDX amplifier that runs a whole house audio system. Uh, sends out a, a, a signal, it's a pink noise or a, a sign sweep. And the microphone knows what it's supposed to hear. It reads the oh. actual reading from the room and then recalibrates the room for phase or equalization. And, and then all of a sudden the, that whole bad sounding room with great speakers and great electronics, now all of a sudden sounds amazing. Um, and we didn't really change anything. We just, we just took the time to calibrate it and tune the room properly. And you know, the, the customer is extremely happy. John, I have a good question for you. Mm -hmm. So me, I did my system in 2003 or 2004. And I remember hearing that down the road, if I wanted to, we're now in 2020, my speakers would be upgradable. Do you do a lot of going back into uh, homes that have audio systems that were built in the say 90s, early 2000s, where you're upgrading those systems. Like once the speaker wires run, does wire ever need run again? Or are we still just using that regular speaker wire and you can always upgrade the speakers as the new technology comes out? Yeah, we're, we're actually, we're able to, to take those speakers out, uh, reuse the wire that's there. Uh, we're able to upgrade the amplification because you know technology moves forward and better amplification comes out, a better surround sound receiver. Um, the speakers themselves, uh, over time, start to degrade. I won't say go bad, but they'll degrade. Right. And by being able to put a fresh set of speakers in, uh, you're going to capture on, you know, 20 years of, you know, or 10, 10 plus years since, since we since we did your house of innovation. You know, 20 years, it's been, um, 20 yeah, years it's of been technology, a... 20 years of innovation that you know, we can, you know, re-energize re life into the space um, without having to rewire. I mean, that's one of the great things that, you know, like when we were, when we did your house, for example, mm -hmm. uh, we've been able to come back out and, and introduce new technology without having to run a bunch of new ones. It got wires. smaller and smaller and smaller. <laughs> <laughs> and the televisions got a lot lighter too, thank goodness. They, they did. <laughs> oh, God. I know for a fact that John can install a TV in less than 25 minutes. Because <laughs> he hey, did we, that it, yesterday. I had help. I had help. <laughs> With help. <laughs> With help. That's awesome. So, you know, um, we hear a lot about, or there, I, I should say there's a perception out there about, you know, in ceiling speakers and in wall speakers. Like, oh, you know, you know, if you, you know, when you're looking at budget, you know, they don't, they don't have to be like of quality because you know, it's only for background music. You know, Joey, can you talk to us a little bit about the importance of having quality in wall and in ceiling speakers? Sure. So the difference between an in wall speaker and an in ceiling speaker is, is really the design. The in ceiling speakers were, were really designed for an infinite baffle. And what that means is that a big open attic space. 
Um, so they will play well without having to have some type of in box enclosure. Um, in, in wall speakers generally are going to sound better. They're gonna play louder. Um, and those are usually gonna be in the wall around the, around the TV. Now, there are some times where, where uh, the look of a speaker is important in the ceiling and you don't want a round speaker. And I have right here, we can actually turn our, our round speakers into a square speaker. So we do have that capability. John, order me those. So that's the first part of it. The second part is, is going back to something Hayden uh, was talking about, designing the house around the great room and the kitchen, because that's where everybody entertains. So one of the things that we do is when there is a budget concern, we, we encourage the dealers, uh, our, our dealers to, uh, to propose putting the better speakers in the rooms where there's gonna be more entertainment, like the kitchen, like the, the, uh, the great room, the master bedroom outside in the, uh, the patio in the backyard, those types of rooms should get the better speakers if there, if there is a budget issue. What's really important about speakers and electronics is that the better speakers and electronics will allow you to play the music at low volume, but it still is intelligible. So when you're having conversations with friends, um, you're playing music, you can still kind of enjoy the music in the background and really have background music instead of background noise uh, when, you're, when you're using lesser, lesser expensive, less performing speakers. But then also, those, those good speakers, you can crank up the volume when you hear a good tune you can, and, and you can play it loud. It's not gonna distort, it's still gonna be clear. And so that, that's, that's why having better built speakers um, for those entertainment areas is, is so important. And the electronics uh, with the Anthem Room Correction is just kind of the cherry on top of it all. Well, the, the designer, thing, am I, oh, sorry. Yeah, the one thing that's, that's great with with the, the Paradigm product and why I like it so much is it, quality is the constant. Performance is the variable, you know? So even, even the, the least expensive speaker they have sounds great. Yes. It won't play to 11, but it'll play to a solid nine, you know? And, you know, as you come up that scale, you know, um, it, the performance increases, not the quality. The quality is always there. Always there, yes. Yeah, and you know that brings me to to another um, point I want to make, or I want to talk to Joey about, or Joey to comment on, is, is you know standalone speakers. So standalone speakers, you either some you either love them or hate them, but um, you know I see them, and I I heard someone uh, actually call them um, a musical instrument. And that got my attention. When someone called a standalone speaker a musical instrument, I said, wait a minute, maybe my perception of standalone speakers weren't right. Because remember, I'm the type that likes everything hidden. I don't want the wires. I don't want to see any equipment. But it, re it, you know, it stopped me in my tracks. And I know uh, Paradigm uh, makes Persona, and it's a standalone speaker. Can you talk to us a little bit about how a standalone speaker works with, you know, the architectural speakers, the in walls and the the in ceilings and and so on. And you know, what's the place for them? Sure. Yeah. Specifically talking about Persona, um, we know we knew that when we designed it, it had to pass what we call the wife acceptance factor. It had to pass the interior designer. Um, you know, er not everybody um, has the same taste, but. We wanted to, again, as I mentioned before, have it blend in, but still look like a piece of art. Um, it's also a statement piece. You, you, somebody comes over and buys a, and I don't want to shock everybody, but those speakers can get up to $35,000 a pair. But um, a lot of people own them. It doesn't have to be doctors or, or, or heart surgeons uh, or, or lawyers, but uh, I have a lot of everyday people who own Persona speakers. Um, they're a statement piece. Their friends come over and not only do they sound great, it's, it's a talking, talking point. So when you're using floor standing speakers in general, there's really two ways to use it. Uh, one is either in a home theater application where you're gonna get very big sound, plays loud, it, it's got, uh, they've got bass drivers. So you use the subwoofer in conjunction with the bass driver versus 
uh, an in, in, in wall speaker, which generally doesn't have the base capability as a floor standing speaker. Um, the, other, the other option is stereo. Uh, back, back in the day, stereo was the way to, to listen to, to music. Um, and it's actually coming back. I just heard uh, this, this was the first month of vinyl albums outsold <laughs> CDs. And so there's a, there is a comeback on, on yes. turntables and vinyl and, and stereo systems again. And so what's, what's cool about Paradigm and Anthem in specific is that we have some products that can allow you to incorporate a surround system and a stereo system in the same room. So you wouldn't have to buy extra speakers for the stereo system. It's already part of the surround system. And so when you, what, what people don't realize is that about 70% of all movie uh, soundtracks is music. Um, and so that's why having a, a high quality, uh, high performance speaker, whether, whether it's our entry level monitor SE premier or premier speakers, or you go up to the persona, is that no matter what type of music you listen to, rock, classic, rap, whatever it is, because of the way our speakers are designed, they're gonna sound as good no matter what, what type of music is being played. Great, great. So John, I don't, I don't want this to be over and not talk about home theater and the role audio plays in home theater. So can you talk to us about home theater design and audio and, you know, and then I would like Danny to comment on decor because I know home theaters are centerpiece in a lot of, a lot of custom homes. Yeah, with, with home theaters uh, it, in, in Atmos uh, becoming more prevalent, it's, it's a very immersive experience. Um, it, it's not just about stuffing a bunch of speakers in the, in the ceiling and, or in the walls or in the room. It's about placing them properly to, to get the, the most effect out of it. And, and it's a lot of science. There's, you know, there, there's a lot of knowledge that comes with it after doing it for years that you know, I don't need to sit down and study a book, but um, the science on where to place that speaker and, and at what height and, and what angle from the, from the listening position is, is very crucial. Um, but, and luckily there's been some great support from, from Paradigm on, on how do we do that? And, and they'll come out with the speaker that's actually designed to, to better fit that space. So it's angled just right. If, if there's design elements that we've got to, got to work around. Um, but a lot of people really, don't realize the science behind it. Like I have clients that this guy wanted, he wanted to put an 80 inch TV in his master bedroom. I'm like, do you understand that if that's in your bedroom, you're basically going to be like sitting in the front row at a movie theater. Like there's a science between the sound, the proper viewing distance. And John, you know that fluently. Mm -hmm. um, but a lot of that is behind the scenes things that as a designer, I'm always thinking about. Um, I'm sure John, you're always thinking about it. But a lot of the clients don't realize that we, I mean, our brains are automatically trained to think of the scale and the size of the room and the picture quality, sound bouncing and things like that. Well, some of the bigger, greatest... bigger is not always better too. I mean, right. that's where people think, let's just stuff the biggest thing in the room. And like you said, Danny, and, and that's where we are. When a client says, hey, I want a theater, you know, well, again, that we don't stop there, that we continue the conversation. What kind and of we theater? figure out how yeah. you're going to use it. And we design the space. Stand? <laughs> We design the space acoustically. Yeah. 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 I mean, I've heard um, from some of our other integrator clients, you know, um, stories about builders. And I, I know this is not going to happen to Bob Webb Homes, where some builders that were not up on, you know, audio or just uh, this type of equipment or the science behind all of it would build a home theater and, and actually build the stage for the seating in the incorrect location, not taking into consideration what needs to happen. Um, so it, it is a very technical thing. And, you know, I mean, you guys are all on it. <laughs> well, <laughs> the sky's the limit when it comes to your theater. Yeah, some of the greatest success we've had is when when the builder and the designer and, and the integrator all work together. 
And, and that's the yeah. beauty. Of it. That's, that's the success of, of Genesis and Bob Webb. And that's the success of, of Genesis and, and, and Danny is, is it just works well. And, and when, when you've got a product like paradigm that kind of helps pull it all together, you know, it's, it's hard to fail, you know, it really yes. is, yes. You, know, yes. you know, the, the only thing is if you take them, if you take a minute to, to talk with the client and figure out what they're looking for, kind of like what Hayden said, you know, when it, when it comes to a theater, it's like, okay, how many people do you want to get in the room? You know, is it four? Is it eight? Is it 12? Um, and cause that'll depend on how, how much of that room, how large that room needs to be and, and what you need to dedicate it to. And then how large, how large of a screen should I do? Well, and that comes back to the room and it also comes back to the quality of the projector you're going to put in. You don't want to put a 180 inch screen in and think you're going to drive it with the $2,000 projector. You know, you're, you're better to put a 110 inch screen in and that $2,000 projector will actually do a great job. You know, so there's those parts that we, you know, we kind of work through and, but it all comes back to also, it's got to be easy to use. It's got to be simple. You know, so the control of it, you know, it doesn't matter if you spent 10,000, a hundred thousand, if you can't work it, it's useless. It's, it's absolutely useless. And, and that's something that, that just won't happen with Genesis Audio. We're going to make sure that it's going to be done. It's going to be done right. And the experience is going to be perfect. Yeah, I mean, and, you know, speaking of, of home theaters, they're going to be more important than ever. I mean, I just heard the other day Regal Cinemas closed, you know, 500 and something locations. I mean, mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I definitely expect to see a rise and, and more important um, a need for you guys more than ever regarding that room in the house. And, and also, you know, um, you know, last year at our trade association uh, trade show, CEDIA, CEDIA Expo, um, you know, we're learning that these rooms, the home theater room has now becoming, uh, uh, they're using it for multiple purposes. I mean, someone can go into a home theater and do their meditation every morning if the sound is beautiful, why not have, you know, forest music going or, you know, and, and your screen could be the forest and you can sit there and just immerse yourself in, in a very meditative state. So for people who are into health and wellness, you know, this is an opportunity for that room to be repurposed and not just for movies or you know, I've heard people using it now for, for exercise, you know, during COVID people, you know, put a Stairmaster in there or something like you know, Peloton. A Peloton, Peloton or whatever. <laughs> and, so that'll give you the mountain and, scene. Yeah. I mean, are doing their yoga sure. because, because they yeah. have this beautiful screen and, and they can uh, join a class or something. So and yeah, theater can also be used now, especially if you have kids gaming. It turns into yeah. a gaming room. That's the that's the where where my yeah you know, my son is. It, we we try we try to limit you know the, yeah. the time on it, but oh, you know, give it, up. <laughs> it is hard. Only so much, only so much you can do, and and when you if if you've ever played a video game oh. on a hundred and twenty inch oh. screen, it's life altering. I mean, it literally is life altering because when you, I mean, they're, they have, they have Atmos surround sound gaming. Yes. I've got it in our showroom. And yes. when you've got the, 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 he likes to play this call of duty. I, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm no good at it. I, I get killed in like two minutes. And you hear these guns and these explosions and they're happening all around you. And as you turn the audio shifts with it. So it's a, it's an insane experience. You know, yes. when you have large of a screen, that big of a room, gaming is definitely a, it yes. is going to be a huge part of it. I want to and make I, a comment. I mean, I, just to add to this really quickly, I, I have a son who's a gamer and, you know, there is such a thing as um, theme songs from these games that are now like pop music or any other genre of music. I mean, they're, they have their favorite, um, theme song and I saw it posted I think it was on Paradigm what's your favorite theme song from from a game and you know I went and I asked my son and he said oh it's Halo <laughs> I was like you you listen to music 
you know, this music separately. And he's like, yeah, it's a thing. So the whole genre, a new genre of music, and it's very instrumental. So having quality audio to listen to this type of music is becoming very important. I, I want to make one more comment about home theater. Um, the, the, the term home theater has so many different meanings now. Um, when I, before I worked for Paradigm um, uh, about 20 years ago, I was, I was a, a custom integrator like John in, in Orlando. And we were building home theater rooms that were strictly for home theater. And over the years, it's become more of uh, how do we do multipurpose? Like everybody has touched on, there's so many different ways to use a home theater. Um, and it doesn't have to be one room. It could be your family room, could be the home theater. So so I, I know we're, I've we're, talked- We're in mine right here. <laughs> I, I, I've talked to a lot of friends over the year. We talk about home theater and they get scared by, oh my God, it's gonna cost me so much. Uh, Cause yeah, they can cost, 200, 300, $400,000 if you really, if you really put, uh, put some money into it, but it can also cost a few thousand dollars. It, it all it's depends on your budget and what room do you want to use if you don't have a dedicated uh, space for it. So I think that's really important for everybody to understand uh, what is possible with what we're offering. Great. And, you know, I want to go back to Danny a little bit. And if you can tell us a little bit about some of the trends that you're seeing on, on a consumer side regarding audio. Um, you know, for me, one of the big things that I, you know, look for when I, when I walk into a space that I know has been designed is that I look for that. It's just, it's just a very basic yeah. thing. I look for, you know, is the TV and the sound bar matching? Because these days with what we have available to us, why aren't they not matching? Why isn't it perfect? You know, because so are you seeing gone. things like that? <laughs> <laughs> um, do you feel, do you feel like the client is aware of their options? The client is aware and the client has become very savvy. So um, it's best to hire, I, when I meet with clients, and I and assess their needs, I immediately assess whether they're going to be a Genesis client or not. And when sound bars are not positioned properly or they're thinner than the TV, that just drives me crazy because you lose symmetry. And it makes it look like, uh, I guess, it, if you compared it to someone's figure, you, you want the weight of the room to be distributed properly. Um, when you start getting into, oh, I ordered this, online I try to hook it up myself and it's it just kind of you have a disconnect um, on that topic what I'm seeing is people are wanting in their showers uh, speakers and that's where we haven't really wired for that way back when and that's where Bluetooth comes in and I think Paradigm and John both offer solutions that can uh, bump up your Wi-Fi network and still give you a seamless audio experience um, when people are getting ready for work, we're seeing uh, mirrors come out now. I was just at, I would say just at, I was at KBIS, uh, Kitchen and Bath Industry Show, and the International Builders Show in January, and the mirrors that we were seeing had speakers fully built into them, and you're able to set your phone on the ledge, and it, are, it had the power adapter built into it. Um, we, we saw some strange things. There was a time in the uh, mid 2000s where there was a hot tub with underwater speakers that a TV built into it. Um, I don't know if anybody actually bought that, but um, <laughs> I'm happy that that trend has passed. <laughs> but it, it's very important in the bathroom outside. I'm in a downtown location. So a lot of my clients are small spaces, um, balconies, patios seeing a lot of televisions done outside. Um, 10 years ago, we didn't have very many or very good outdoor uh, television and outdoor speakers. And that technology has advanced so much. Um, I remember the first time I saw somebody hooking up to an outdoor speaker, this was in 2007. I was like, "How? what just happened? Like, that's possible? Um, but we tried to stay on top of the trends. So awesome. people want, people want audio fast. every year. Yeah, the, <laughs> design, the are constantly moving. Yeah, design, design is about engaging the senses. So 
when I'm designing a space, I have a soundtrack in my head or in my headphones for that space. So we try to engage all of the senses and sight, sound, um, smell. Uh, those are all things in the higher end hotel projects. These are actually coming into the home. I don't know if John, you've done these yet, but there are scent diffusers being built into the HVAC uh, systems. You'll see them at yes. retail stores, hotels, but there's actually home versions of those, these things available now. And that's something you wanna integrate in. Um, so when you do have guests or you're entertaining, it's about the immersive experience. And that immersive, immersive, that immersive experience is tying in all of the elements, sight, sound, smell, touch, um, I'm missing one cent. Oh, <laughs> we, we get it. Right we get it. Okay. It, it, it's, I think it's the hearing. Okay, right. good. Right. Well, <laughs> but, so, okay. I mean, you know, we're, we're almost running yeah. out. So I actually, yeah, I wanted to, there are a couple questions in the chat that I want to address. Um, so if we could answer those before we wrap up. Um, okay. The first one, John, this is probably going to be for you. What home automation application platforms are most popular today and how do you vet the ones that you use to make sure they stay relevant or in in business going forward to ensure the investment in a whole home system is enjoyable for years to come uh, yeah really what what we do is we, we test everything and and it's real life testing um, my wife hates it but I bring it home and I stick <laughs> it in the house and if it passes that that test you know then then it can make it because the, the fact of the matter is, there's always something new. You know, there was a, a new light switch that came out that I thought was gonna be really cool. And it wasn't from any of the vendors that we normally deal with. So I brought it home and I threw it in my kitchen. Yeah, it didn't make it. The, the wife's, you know, she didn't like it. She didn't like the way it controlled it, you know, the, the appearance of it, the whole nine yards. So that didn't, that never made it onto the, onto the floor because it, it's gotta be something that fits and, so with the with the control systems that that we currently carry, um, you know, we 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 look at how they're performing, look at where they're going, um, we look at industry trends, we we try to look ahead, and make sure that you know we're not still selling fax machines because yeah. you know yeah. it, it's still something that's needed, but just not every day. So. Oh. Yeah, number one, I think you have a showroom, right? So if it's going to make it, it's going to be in your showroom right. for you for people to come and experience it. And number two, I think we talked earlier about Danny's home where you installed equipment in there and he went with your advice that was 20 years ago that he's still using. Mm -hmm. So we have a live we've example upgraded. right we've here. Upgraded. <laughs> right, we've upgraded. So we have, we have, we had a, we had a universal remote control, nothing bad about universal, but it was a type of remote control that was really popular at the time. And it was Genesis audio took care of me. Um, it, it was such a complicated system that they actually had to fly the rep from the uh, company out because I think I was one of the first people to have it and they were trying to get the technology just right. But Genesis came out. Oh my God, I think I felt like we were having coffee every morning, but they took care of me, got it done right. And this was back in 2005. And then Control 4 came out and John was like, Danny, I really recommend this system. It's less clunky, clunky it's more reliable. Um, and I'm not saying that anything negative about the old system, but it was moving into the future he felt that my system would be better on the control four system that was installed. Maybe we did that, what, eight to 10 years ago. And I am still using that, but all my speakers we've done, we've done a lot. Yeah. <laughs> so the, so this, is, this is the experiment and I'm sure you get some of that too, Hayden, right? Like, you know, John mm -hmm. came to you with the new ideas. So yes. I, yes. And, and that's, well that's what I love. That's what I love about it is, we use Control 4 primarily at Bob Webb, and that, that's kind of the main hub if you're not familiar with that. It's, it's the whole home automation. There's apps. There's We have an iPad that we um, have in our model home that, that you can access it. But I remember several years ago, um, you know, because I'm, I'm big in technology. Obviously, John is. I think everyone here is. And that's where um, Amazon, it was uh, Alexa and then Google Home, you know, was coming out with those, those automations and all that stuff. And I was like, John, 
is there a way that we can just say a command and the lights turn on? Is there a way that we can say whatever command and the entire room is like the mood is set? Or if I'm closing down the house, I can just say, hey, close the house and all the blinds go down, the alarm is set, the lights turn off. Um, I mean, there, there's so much that you can do. And John said, yeah, it, it, it's something that we, we got very excited. We didn't have to rewire a thing it was just a simple software update, um, takes a few minutes. And then we threw some Amazon Alexas throughout the house, hid them, and <laughs> it integrates very well. <laughs> Hayden, you just answered one of the questions that we had in the chat was what are the cool things that you install in Bob Webb Homes? So that was perfect segue to that. And then one last question, and then we're going to wrap it up. John, this will be for you. What's your go-to for whole home audio amplifier units? If you have a house that has all the speakers set, for example, the prior owner moved out and left the speakers and central wiring, but not an amp. Oh, definitely the Anthem, the Anthem MDX. Um, it's a multi-channel. It comes in a four zone and eight zone package. Uh, uh, so the four zone is a four source, four zone, and the eight zone is an eight source, eight zone. Absolutely amazing. Great the zone power. Thing, the and zone thing is very important, John. What's that? Wanna, the zone thing is very important with the amplifiers because way back when, I think we only had two zone or mm -hmm. three zone and they upgraded. And now you just said they have up to eight zone. So what a zone, I don't know if you want to elaborate on it, but a zone is considered a room pretty much, right? Right. So, right. Yeah. so each, each, each room has its own individual uh, source and ability. But what's neat with this particular product is it's got the, the Anthem room, room correction or the ARC, which is what we talked about in the beginning, where we're able to come in and overcome the obstacles of the room with technology and some software and, and really make everything kind of come together. And, and, it, it's, and it's at a price point that, that you know, it's, it's hard to keep. It's yeah. performance and everything. It, Great. And, and, and I'll add on to that. It does uh, work seamless with home automation products. Uh, also, what's really cool about the MDX is each zone has the capability of adding a subwoofer to it. So if you want a room that might be a big room where you have some really nice speakers in there, but you're not getting the bass output that you want when you're playing it louder, you can actually add a subwoofer into that room, whether it's an in-room subwoofer, uh, a, a floor standing subwoofer, or a subwoofer in the wall or ceiling, um, you can incorporate that into the MDX to give your to to give you a basically a 2.1 um, stereo system in your wall and ceiling. It's it's a it's a very flexible, uh, great performing, and like John said, it's not very expensive compared to what else is out there. I mean, and we can go on, right? <laughs> Yeah, I, I know that's that's the that's 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 why we're gonna have to make this a series. I mean, it can't just, yes, it can't just yes. stop there's here. there's so many amazing technologies available today to really improve your life at your home. And you know, today we talked about whole home audio. Um, as we said earlier, this is going to be the first in a series. So we're gonna have the next one next month. So definitely, you know, stay tuned to the Genesis Audio Facebook page for the next in our series. And thank you to our panel.